There you go. And thank you for the push <laughs> to do this because I record at least twice every week and oh, I never yeah. turn on my camera just because I'm like, ah. You are listening to You Are a Lawyer. I'm Kyla Denagno, a 2015 law school graduate. Yeah. So hello, <laughs> face to face. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do it, I guess. Sam, would you tell the audience about yourself, about your background, you know, everything before Legal Funnel? So I'm a virtual lawyer. I basically started this journey um, when I read the amazing Tim Ferriss book called 4-Hour Workweek. And I got exposed to, to three key principles. The first one was the virtual uh, model, essentially being able to run your law firm from anywhere in the world, not tied to any 95 schedule. I'm like, okay, that sounds amazing. Second is autom automated. Somehow your business is be able to kind of be able to run on its own, uh, make you get your clients while you sleep. I was like, okay, that sounds cool. And scalable, scalable just means it's able to grow without necessarily you doing more work. So you're using a lot more videos, using funnel concepts, things like that, that really helps you replicate yourself over and over um, so that you don't, you don't have to, you know, have the one-to-one -one interactions with, with your prospects and have the same conversations and answer the same questions, all that over and over. Instead, how can I create this one system so that my prospects can go through this kind of funnel, get the question answered, and get them to schedule a call with my team so they can close them and then my other rest of my team can take care of these clients. So at that point, when I got exposed to these, to these three key principles, I made a promise to myself. I'm like, every business decision I'm going to make for my law firm has to match these three key principles. It has to be virtual. It has to be automated. It has to be scalable. And uh, fast forward seven years later, I've been able to create seven of these virtual law firms for myself. I do a lot of client generation for myself, but also I'm able to refer them out to other attorneys. Um, and also been on a journey for the last two and a half years to teach this to other lawyers uh, to show how exactly how it's possible, how it's very repeatable, uh, that anybody can set this up. And we've been able to help over 330 lawyers do this with a lot of, a lot of success stories and a lot of the success stories are not coming back to us. And yeah, I'm just on a journey to kind of share all these insights with other attorneys. Yeah. So 330 other attorneys you've shared this with, that's incredible. That's a big deal. So do you find that people are attracted to the fact that you can automate this and then make the process easier? Or they're like, you helped me. How can I help other people? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I teach essentially two things, how to get clients and how to automate the law firm so it run on its own. And I realized that a lot of attorneys need help with that second part, to be able to automate the law firm. Why? Because a lot of lawyers are so busy, right? Which attorney have you found that's not busy? So I kind of come in and teach lawyers how to be able to work less by being able to automate using very certain specific online tools to be able to kind of take care of that tedious and repetitive tasks. And second, delegating to virtual assistants to really help you sign up clients, help you onboard your clients, serve your clients, and also do the marketing for you. Um, so yeah, the, definitely it's a big need in the legal market right now. And hopefully, you know, I've been a frontier of that and be able to pass it on to other lawyers. Yeah. So do you love doing each of those components? Do you really enjoy marketing? Do you really enjoy teaching? Or is it just that because you need to do all those things running your businesses, you've learned to love them? The experience first comes from running my own law firms first. So that's where I learn and apply everything. But my passion, my mission from ever since, uh, as I can remember, from middle school was always sharing and giving. I used to always be that kid who would make the outlines and go and share with everybody without anybody asking for it. Um, so I love giving, I love sharing, and that's kind of how I use legal funnel to be able to pass that off to other lawyers. Okay. Very cool. Why did you choose the name legal funnel for your business? So the foundation of client generation and customer generation and money generation online is all based on the principle of funnels. Essentially there's a set of people that either may or may not know you, how do you get them to become clients? The system to turn those strangers into paid clients is the funnel uh, system. And this system is applied to every type of business you can think about online. And when I got exposed to this six years ago, I was like, this is so cool. Can I apply this for my own law firm? And I looked around and I couldn't find other people who were applying these concepts. So I started applying it. And right away, I started within a couple of months, started getting results from it. Essentially, my epiphany came to me when I was on a trip in Israel. 
and I was on vacation and I was still signing up clients. I was getting notifications. Wow. This person made, you know, $497 payments. This person missing $1,000 payments. I'm like, this is so cool. So started repeating this over and over. Uh, and that was all because again, because of a funnel. Um, so yeah, that's the foundation. There's, um, and these things are being applied by every successful company online. How it's applied to the legal market is its own uh, mystery. And that's the mystery that I've been able to solve in the past six years or from practical experience of making it work for myself and also seeing now applying this for other lawyers and be able to get that feedback that I'm able to pass on to other lawyers. Yeah, I'm sure lawyers are attracted to it because marketing and advertising seems to be such a pain point for lawyers. And I mean, so what is it without giving away any like proprietary secrets, <laughs> how do you make that process easy? Or is it just that you teach them a method that works? I could, I have no problem sharing any secrets, by the way. That's my okay. secret sauce is sharing all my secrets. Um, so I could explain the idea behind it, but how you go actually apply these things for your own law firm is a whole other game, very practical things that you need to create and do and set up for yourself, which is exactly what my program does. So what it is, essentially, I'm going to try to summarize it is first, you always need to collect your leads contact information upfront first, okay? First goal, get their contact information. How do you do that? Well, you need to offer something in exchange for their contact information. So, or some people can also just drive people towards saying, hey, I will solve this specific problem for you, okay? That's the first step. Second thing you gotta do is to nurture, build a relationship with your leads. How do you do that? With a very specific video that as soon as they enter your funnel, they watch this video, they hear from you, they hear exactly where you address their problems, their pain points, um, case studies of how you've been able to help uh, other clients in the past about this, and a clear call to action on what they should do next. Also, on the back end, you have automated emails that are set up. As soon as they become your lead, they're sent automated emails and sometimes texts in order to get them to watch a video and to go take, the, again, the desired action, which leads to the third part. What is the desired action? For us attorneys, it's only one of two. Either go book a call with me here or just give me a call. That's the essentially the foundation of it. How to go set this up is exactly, again, what I teach inside the legal funnel with very practical step-by-step -step instructions. Yeah. I love that you're doing it for lawyers, right? Because you don't need to reinvent the wheel if you have something that's working. And so just teach them how to, how to do it the right way. Yes. And these things work, by the way. And again, as I mentioned earlier, these funnel concepts are being applied by all of the seven, eight, nine, ten figure companies in the world. How you apply it to the legal market is again, it's, it hasn't caught on to these things. Um, I think we're only like the top one to two percent of the lawyers have caught on to these things, started like looking into it, started learning it, started applying it. But I promise you, that's where the legal market is heading a hundred percent. hundred percent. Most websites will switch over to funnels. And um, it's kind of like a, you got to implement these things or you won't survive. Yeah. So if you are listening to this, you know, don't let the, don't let it pass by you take it seriously and try to get on get on as soon as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what was, what's your background? What did you study in undergrad or what were you interested in before law school? Uh, well, while I was in, uh, in UCLA, I was like, what am I going to do next? I knew I had to go to some kind of grad school. Um, my friends started, uh, essentially started cho choosing law school. And I guess I kind of got coursed into it. I'm like, my friends are going, so let me try it out. So no way. Yeah. It was just, really? a little okay. based on, yeah. I had no idea what it entailed, what being a lawyer was until I started working while I was in law school at a law firm. And I was like, wait a minute, this is what I'm signing up myself to do. And that's when I realized that I'm probably not going to be a traditional lawyer, but what am I going to do? That's when I started soul searching and reading a lot of books, watching a lot of YouTube videos figuring out how I can use my skills um, to be able to be, still be able to serve the legal market without being a traditional lawyer. So mm. I always, um, I'm a contrarian kind of thinker where every, if everybody's running this way, I'm running the opposite way. Um, and I learn things from the other, other markets that I apply to the legal market, yeah. you know, um, kind of like my secret sauces. So yeah, it's, you know, it's worked that well. <laughs> so you knew that you wanted or at least you were going to practice in a non-traditional way. And I really love that point because there's no shame in practicing in a non-traditional way or doing, taking a non-traditional role, right? Most people go to law school to become attorneys. So by default, anything else that you do after law school is non-traditional. So 
you are licensed to practice law though? I am, yeah. In okay, California. in California. Is your license still active? And do you find that being a licensed attorney helps you to make these initial conversations for legal funnel? It definitely does. Um, again, with everything in life, it's not about what you have, it's about what you do with it. So, you know, I still see like life is still a grind, no matter what, where you're at, so what, what are you going to do? Yeah. But it does, it does, for me, it does build authority um, for me to do what I do. Um, you know, I know some, some people, I know your listeners are in certain situations and things like that, but just know, again, all the power is in your hands. You're never, your settings and, you know, and things that have happened to you, it doesn't define you. Always make the best of what you have. Um, be smart, be a contrarian, do the opposite of what other people are doing. And uh, other practical advice I could give to a lot of you is, you know, become a specialist, become really good at one certain idea and combine it with something else. Uh, you always want to take two specialties. So to just say mine is marketing and legal. Those are my like two things. And where, where those cross, that's where my expertise comes in. So find your top two, which Kyle, I'm going to call you out. Let's just say you're a good writer mm -hmm. or you're a good content producer. Mm -hmm. Now in what field can I maximize on that? And what is my biggest long-term vision I could build for that? Yeah. And let's strive towards that um, and only do that and stop doing everything else. You know, if I get if I get a side gig for something else, sorry, I can't do it. I'm working on my long term kind of vision. And everybody, everybody needs that uh, focus. Uh, a lot of people, I think, that struggle is because of the lack of focus. They don't have, they don't know what their long term goal looks like, and they get distracted by all these other side opportunities and gigs and things like that. Avoid those. Go really focus on your um, long term goal, and you know, don't give up on it. Yeah, hundred percent. And that point rings especially true for me because. I find that I'm interested in a lot of things and I'm like, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. And probably two weeks ago, I told myself, no, if it's not writing and if it's nothing to do with law, don't do it. Like these are the things you want to do and you can find stuff that involves both of those. So, okay. Exactly. All, all you're missing, Kylie, by the way, I already know is that you haven't written down that plan and goal yet and you I haven't, haven't signed it and dated it and give yourself a deadline. So write it out. I'm going to encourage you to write it. And again, I'm sharing these things, not to call Kyle out so everybody can learn from these, is to write out your goals, commit to it, and put a deadline on it. Yeah. Don't just let it, you know, don't let life happen. Yeah, that's true. And I'll write it down, make it plain. And I think that will re really resonate with a lot of the law students. Um, the audience is either law students or young lawyers who've been practicing less than five years. So Amazing, amazing. Um, I, yeah, I'm all, yeah. always looking to find young people uh, who are kind of intrigued about these things, either be client generation or anything kind of like future kind of forward thinking tech, things like that. So if you are, I'm just going to put it out there. If you are one of those and you're kind of intrigued about this conversation, please find me and reach out to me. Um, I'm always looking to work with the different people, hear ideas and, you know, have those conversations. Yeah. So let's touch on a couple of things you mentioned in your questionnaire before we started recording. So you opened the law firm, you learned to succeed by watching YouTube videos and trial and error. Is there a mentoring aspect to legal funnel? Oh yeah. This is, okay, okay. This is really good. I'm glad you, you brought that up. So I got exposed to an individual four years ago through business who's had a Silicon Valley background, very successful guy. Um, and he was basically applying what he was learning to the legal market and super smart guy. And I started noticed that he's a genius. So let me work with them and get interact with them as much as I could. Kept following up, kept following up, kept following up until finally two and a half, three years ago or so, he essentially, we started working together and became a cl very close mentor to me where essentially everything that I was working on somehow had his insight and had some kind of feedback that I would get from him about what I should do. And that for me was really a big effect into my growth. Having somebody outside of myself who has a, who has a big vision who can help me not overthink things and help me create these plans the same way that I, I tried to do with you a little bit earlier, Carla. Um, and I really saw the effect of that. And that's why I really opened the eyes of the powers of mentorship. And that really honestly inspired me to do Legal Funnel um, for me to be a mentor for other people because five minutes of really good advice could change some people's life trajectory entirely. And I try to do that as much as I can. I, uh, the way that I do it right now is in a group coaching setting. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to do one-to-ones anymore, but yeah. in a group setting, you know, I'll get like four, 40 or 50 lawyers who come on and I have a very systematic program that I teach these things. Um, 
and get people to implement with a work with a worksheet they follow along. And I could see the results again from people having an external person who can come and give them that focus and clarity on what they should do next. Yeah, hundred percent. So you've mentioned a couple of times that you've helped people open firms and you've opened, you know, had seven businesses for yourself. How does it feel? Like the end of the day, you're getting ready to go to sleep and you're like, I'm helping people live their dreams. What does that feel like? Every since every single day that I wake up, I work in my desired zone. So I was very conscious. I'm very conscious about what am I doing and does this align with what I'm good, great at? And is this something that I enjoy doing? And everything that I do to this day has to align. Again, I have these certain rules for myself and I stick to it. I still align with those two rules. And thankfully, I wake up every morning. <laughs> I jump out of bed, hungry, ready to do any, uh, anything that's in front of me. And it honestly doesn't feel like work for me at all. I'm kind of like usually in a flow zone, especially when I'm creating and doing things that I love. Um, and I love it. Thank God, I feel blessed. And again, the reason why I'm sharing this is not to, you know, to talk about myself, but really it's to show that it is completely possible. Again, with having the right guidance, uh, good mentor, things like that, all these things are completely possible for you as well. Yeah. And what I'm hearing, like the kind of understory is that even when you're done with law school, even after taking and passing the bar exam, you're always going to be learning. You're always going to be working hard. Yep. Life is about constant improvement, no matter what situation you're in. So yep. yeah, as long as you have the right attitude and you're always constantly improving yourself, you always do well. Absolutely. So this is a great time to talk about the two comma club. What is that? And what does it mean to be a part of the two commas club? So for those that are watching the videos, these are the click funnels, two comma clubs. Um, they're essentially a goal that ClickFunnels creates for you that says, hey, if you can make funnels work for your own business and you make a million dollars online, then we'll give you one of these awards. And if it was, honestly, if it wasn't for one of these awards, I don't think I would have had a goal or a vision to be able to do this. So I was like, this sounds cool. Yeah. So it took me about four and a half years to get my first, basically make my first million dollars online for my first law firm. This one took two and a half years. For my second law firm, then I was able to do it for legal funnel, for my third company in a year and a half okay. and then re most recently i also earned my fourth one and that took me more, just one year so every time that i did it, it took me less and less time yeah the reason is it's very repeatable this once you figure out how to bring clients serve clients automate all that stuff it's, i swear it's the same thing over and over and over and over that you do over and over um yeah it's um again it's a complete possible one and now i've kind of been able to show our student that it is possible. Here's how to do it. Here's how you get focus on it. And now our, uh, our first student has been able to receive his first one. And we have a lot more on the way uh, for okay. our students to achieve it as well. Uh, so vulnerable moment. I thought those were like platinum records. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is he like. in inter entertainment law? What's going on? These are like my social proof. You'll learn this about yeah. marketing. These are very strong. Um, always, again, whenever these days, Zoom, our Zoom meetings are like, it's very important. It's how we present ourselves, how we talk. So make sure you have a good microphone. Make sure you have a good camera and make sure you're surrounded by good social proof and things like that around you. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> so Sam, I just have one last question here when we wrap up. What would you say to anyone listening who's interested in marketing, doesn't know what they want to do after law school, just any kind of advice about the path that your career has taken and how they can do something similar? I'm going to be very practical to you guys. If I just say if somebody put up an award is I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. If you somehow make $10,000 in the next 48 hours, how would you do that? That's the question I always ask myself all the time. And here's the, well, here's the best answer I could give you. Make a list of the top 10 people you would love to work with. Okay. This is your hit list, whatever you want to call it. 10 people minimum, if not more, but let's just start with 10 to keep it simple. Go get their contact information. It's very easy. There's these Chrome plugins that you can use to be able to get anybody's email address. Okay, get their contact information. What you do is use, use a tool called Loom, L-O-O-M.com, which is a very quick way to be able to record a video on your computer where you can share a screen and also share, share a video of yourself talking and make a Loom, a personalized Loom video, a very short video to that person and just say hi, provide some kind of value, share something nice, just be a positive, good person and just tell them whatever you want. And this personalized video, you just send, you just send uh, this video to them, you email it to them, cold email it to them, send out 10 of them, you will get at least three or four responses. 
from that, that starts the conversations to see, hey, what, what can I do to make your life better? What are you working on? Is there anything that I could help you on? So ask those right questions. And I promise you out of those, you at least have one or two opportunities for a very sustainable, uh, you know, sustainable work to, uh, to do with them. Okay. Very practical. 10 people make a list, get their contact information, send all of them 10 Loom videos. I promise anybody who actually goes and does this, you will not fail. You will not fail. You just have to go do it. And, and yeah. it's, it's pretty easy. So just go do that. So breaking my own rules, I got another follow-up question to that. <laughs> Should these 10 people be in the grouping of the two things you really want to do, right? You're not just reaching out to people, just. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. These are your desired people that you would love to work with. Okay, cool. All right. I love that. So make the list of the 10 people that you actually would love to work with, create those videos. I'm sure they'll love the effort that you put into it. It's probably pretty unique to get a video. It works. It works like a charm. I've hired so many people and I've done so many different things with people who have sent me personalized things. It works. Wow. Nobody does it. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Yeah. I hadn't considered it. I'm sitting here making mental notes. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sam. And thank you for prompting me to turn on my camera. I'm always sitting here. I just never, I never record the video. So of course, I appreciate and, it. Of course. And anybody who got up to this point, uh, congrats. Um, again, uh, if you are interested in these things, please re uh, find me and reach out to me. Um, I do have a Facebook group for lawyers. And maybe if you are uh, going to be a lawyer one day, you can join our Facebook group. Just search for Legal Funnel Lawyers on Facebook. You'll be able to join our Facebook group. You'll also be able to search Legal Funnel, schedule a call, uh, somehow you know, get to me. I uh, love having a conversation. And for anybody who's struggling at this point, I promise you better days are ahead. Uh, ask yourself, what can I do today? What can I do today? Focus on that day. Don't worry about results. Results usually pan out in long term, but what you do is is important. What you do on a short term basis, on, on a daily basis. So just focus on your daily, and everything will work out well for you. Yeah, and to everyone that's listening to just the podcast, I know you want to see all the stuff we're talking about in our backgrounds. So you have to go to YouTube and make sure you watch the video as well. I'll put the links in the show description, and I will link all of Sam's social media and his website in the show notes as well. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Carla. Keep up the yeah, great work. Yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah. Bye.